recognize global upshift in activity as a consequence of not only reopening, but the massive amount of stimulus that governments have put into their respective economies around the world and other, including the United States infrastructure programs that seem likely to follow. We think an industrialized country like Sweden is poised to see continued advances, which have already led their equity market, the OMX, to be one of the best performers in Europe already this year. Yeah, great point. And, and EWD, folks, that is, of course, the Swedish iShares fund where you get a whole basket of these names. It's got a beautiful year-to-date picture. It's off the highs, though, so you wouldn't be buying at least at the highs. Your second country, Switzerland, and there we want to show people the EWL. That is the uh, ETF that encompasses a lot of Swiss companies. Why do you like it? Uh, there's similar story as it relates to Europe. However, you're looking at the composition of the companies that are in EWL or the Swiss ETF. You can see they're much more defensive in nature. Healthcare companies, Nestle's, of course, a big food uh, consumer staple conglomerate with a global franchise. This would be an approach that one would adopt by way of saying, while I like the play on global synchronization and an updraft of economic activity that should benefit uh, a highly economically sensitive country like Sweden. At the same time, though, should we see some modest deceleration in growth going forward in the second half of this year? And while still above trend out into 2022 and 2023, we might like to take a barbell approach in which we take advantage of some of those more defensive companies and therefore allowing the, the portfolio overall to weather, if not percolate, almost regardless of the economic outcome, as long as it's one of global economic growth that remains positive, which clearly is what we believe we're likely to see take place. Mark Lucini of Janet, great to see you, Mark. There's the bell. Folks, we lost about half of the gains and dropping for the Dow, still up 72. It's a record for the NASDAQ, which gains 119 points. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Cudlow. I'm Larry Cudlow. So, Sheer, raw, brutal political power is our topic this evening as the Senate debates a motion to proceed on S-1. That's their big election takeover bill. To quote Senate Republican leader Mitch McConnell, this election takeover bill is a partisan power grab by the left to rig the rules of American elections permanently in their favor. Mr. McConnell also linked Democratic dream of ending the Senate filibuster with their dream of rigging.